Commenting on the odd light seen on April 21, 2008 over Phoenix, the FAA says that the lights did not appear on radar and weren't a threat to any air traffic, so no action was taken. However, the FAA has issued a statement saying they will not allow the air traffic controllers to talk about what they saw. According to a regional FAA spokesperson, Ian Greger, it's against agency policy to allow the air traffic controllers to discuss what they saw. The Phoenix New Times reported the story about the silencing of the Sky Harbor air traffic controllers, and they've already filed an official request to receive any documents or recordings that contain statements about the lights by the air traffic controllers. When asked what the FAA plans to do about the appearance of the lights in the sky over Phoenix on Monday night, FAA spokesperson Ian Greger said, there's nothing to investigate. Now this is in direct opposition to the FAA policy to investigate anything and everything strange that might be reported in the sky over the USA. That policy has been in place since the terrorist attacks of 9-11. Just a day after the lights were spotted, the Arizona Republic newspaper reported that Phoenix resident Lino Melo claimed his neighbor launched several helium balloons with flares on them. Lilo says the balloons went up in the sky from his neighbor's backyard around 8 p.m. on Monday night. A Phoenix police helicopter pilot also says that he saw what he believed might have been helium balloons with flares hanging from them on the same night. Despite these claims, there are some serious problems with the helium balloons explanation. After hearing the hoax story, I contacted a friend who lives in Phoenix. He agreed to try and reach Melo or his neighbor. Since the article came out on Tuesday, attempts to contact Lino Melo have failed. He does not answer his door and his neighbor wasn't home when the friend stopped by on two occasions. In fact, people living two houses down from Melo say that they know Lino's next door neighbor and he wasn't even home on Monday night. The neighbors claim that they were out in their own backyard that evening and would have seen any balloons with flares on them being launched from that neighbor's backyard. They also agreed to ask him about the flare story if they happened to see him. By contrast, a number of witnesses have come forward to say that jets took off from Luke Air Force Base on Monday night. Luke still claims they had no aircraft in the sky that evening. Further, I asked Kelly Atwood, a professional photographic software expert, to take a look at the video and photos from the 42108 lights event. She has extensive experience examining UFO photos for legitimacy and has been able to identify many hoaxes involving balloons, dry cleaning bags, and flares. Kelly says that the lights were too bright and the wrong color to be flares. She also states that the video does not show the normal effect that flares exhibit as they burn. Instead, the lights resemble objects that would have been much larger with a steady source of illumination. Kelly lives in Phoenix but was working on Monday night and didn't see the lights. Apart from the holes in the hoax theory, the FAA issues, and the Luke Air Force Base denials that jets were in the air when residents said they were, there are other things that point to the fact that strange lights have been back over Phoenix for some time. All told, there have been hundreds of reports about strange lights and unidentified objects in the Phoenix skies since the original March 13, 1997 Phoenix Lights event. Many of the reports include photos, video, and come from credible witnesses. And strange lights are not just seen over Phoenix. Twice in two weeks, UFOs have been sighted and filmed in the skies over St. Augustine, Florida. As with the other areas in the state, UFOs have become commonplace since the South Florida power outage in 2008. After the new Phoenix Lights event, I received this very interesting report from Sherry Title and Nathan Morrison, who took a look at my article on the Phoenix Lights and sent this information to me. This is what they write. On Monday, April 21, 2008, four lights appeared over Phoenix. Video and photos were taken. Air traffic controllers in the main tower at Sky Harbor International Airport visually identified them. Witnesses all over Phoenix confirmed the sighting. The FAA releases an initial statement reporting that the lights did not appear on radar and weren't a threat to any air traffic, so no action was taken. 
The FAA then issues a statement saying they will not allow air traffic controllers to talk about what they saw. Witnesses report Air Force jets were scrambled at roughly the same time the lights appeared in the sky. Tuesday, April 22, 2008. The Arizona Republic newspaper reports that Phoenix resident Lino Melo claims his neighbor launched several helium balloons with flares on them. Milo says the balloons went up in the sky from his neighbor's yard around 8 o'clock on Monday night. An anonymous confessor comes forward and says he launched four latex balloons tied with fishing line anchoring common roadside flares to each balloon, launching them one minute apart into the air in his backyard. Lino Melo backs this story up in many interviews. April 26, 2008. Bill Nell, UFO investigator, writes an op-ed piece stating, After hearing the hoax story, I contacted a friend who lives in Phoenix. He agreed to try to reach Melo or his neighbor. Since the article came out on Tuesday, attempts to contact Lino Melo have failed. He does not answer his door and his neighbor wasn't home when my friend stopped by on two occasions. In fact, people living two houses down from Melo said they know Lino's next door neighbor and he was not home on Monday night. They claim that they, the neighbor was out, of, out uh, in their backyard. They claim that they were in their backyard on that evening and would have seen balloons with flares being launched. Our investigation begins. A group of researchers, myself included, thinking that the alleged anonymous hoaxer's confession sounded highly suspicious and unbelievable, decided to investigate further after the above chain of events occurred. Just analyzing the theory that these lights were a flare tied to a latex balloon filled with helium, four of them total, poses two problems right away. A. Mathematically, a latex balloon of the size the hoaxer claimed he used would not be able to lift the flare off the ground, let alone be able to obtain the altitude seen by all the witnesses in the video and pictures. B. A flare tied to a latex balloon with fishing line would melt the fishing line before it ever got off the ground. Meanwhile, we wondered, if this hoaxer story was true, why in dry conditions like Phoenix was this man not charged with at least some sort of fire code violation or issued a ticket for his reckless prank? After all, he admitted to the crime on broadcast television. Several news articles stated that the police department, the FAA, and fire department weren't going to investigate or charge the man due to the fact that he hadn't broken any laws that they knew of. I sent emails to the mayor of Phoenix, to the members of the Phoenix City Council that had email addresses listed on the city site, and the Phoenix Fire Marshal outlined it in the fire hazard represented by this alleged hoax and asking why the alleged hoaxer was not being investigated for fire code and FAA violations. After all, if the alleged hoaxer's actions were taken to the extreme, such as an individual could conceivably have tied some sort of explosive device to these helium-filled latex balloons and floated them directly into a commercial airline's airliner's airspace and exploded them, the result could have been catastrophic. I also sent a copy of that same email to the third major to the three major local news networks in Phoenix. One councilwoman and the assistant fire marshal did reply to my emails with the following statements. Councilwoman Maria Bayer says, Sherry, I spoke with my contact over in the police department regarding the Phoenix Lights incident, and Sergeant Dwyer said that yes, the gentleman would be charged with something, but at this time it is out of the Phoenix Police Department's hands. The feds and the FAA are looking at what charges to bring against him. He did not have any further details. Please let me know if you have any further questions. Thank you. Sincerely, Jessica Ament, District 3 Office Manager for Councilwoman Maria Baer. Here's a response from Assistant Fire Marshal Kevin Roche. Mrs. Title, thank you for your message of May 5, 2008. I am sorry that it's taken so long for us to respond, but your question generated a lot of discussion among our staff. The fire code does not envision a situation where someone would attach a flare to a balloon and release it. This situation certainly presents hazards that we need to address. This is currently not a section of the fire code that prohibits this activity. We have referred your question to our attorney to draft appropriate language to be added to the fire code. Please let me know if you can provide, if I can provide you with any additional information. Kevin Roche, Assistant Fire Marshal. 
So according to the Councilwoman's inside police source, despite the denial to the media that the FAA has no plans to investigate, the police know differently, and indeed the FAA was investigating, as were the feds. Now, preparation and purchasing of the materials for our recreation of the hoaxer story. Knowing ahead of time that mathematically the hoaxer story was highly improbable, we created the alleged hoax at significant trouble and expense and acquired photo and video documentation of the experiment. Our results concluded firmly that the hoaxer story was completely false. The researcher tasked with recreating the hoaxer story did a search for companies in Arizona that sell latex balloons at 3 feet or 36 inches in diameter, as the hoaxer claimed, and as verified by the alleged eyewitness, his neighbor, Lino Melo. Most retailers didn't sell latex balloons over 12 inches wide. 12 inch wide is the standard size. One retailer found online sold a latex balloon 3 feet in diameter. So he bought one for our experiment. He bought the 36 inch wide balloon for $6 plus $24 for the helium to inflate it at Balloon World on Olympic in LA. The experiment made use of the lightest weight road flare commercially available. The flare is made by Orion. It was purchased from Craig and Auto Parts and cost $3.99. It claims a 15 minute burn time. He weighed the flare on a postal scale and it came out to weigh exactly 0.8 pounds. This translates to about this translates to about 12.8 ounces. This means using a 12 inch diameter balloon with a lift capacity of 14 grams apiece, it would take 25.928571428578 grams or about 26 balloons and there's a lot more numbers than that, believe me, I just can't read them all, or about 26 balloons to lift one flare. Using a single latex balloon, you would need a 3-foot diameter balloon or 36-inch diameter balloon. They are said to lift about 0.9 pounds, while our flare was, weighs only 0.8 pounds. This also means that our fishing line must weigh less than 0.1 pounds or 45 grams approximately. It also means that our balloon would be just about its maximum lift capacity, meaning a slower ascent than the equal sized balloon with a lighter payload. It takes 80 gallons of compressed helium to make 11 cubic feet. We need approximately 14.1 cubic feet to achieve a lift of 0.9 pounds. In short, the guy running our experiment had the 36 inch latex balloon inflated to its maximum capacity. He then tied the flare to it with the fishing line. The flare could not be lifted by the balloon. He tried it both inside and outside and even took it to an alleyway where there was a clear wind. No lift. Still photos and video were taken of this experiment. Cited are links to the still photos and the video of this experiment. The anonymous alleged confessor seems to have been hoaxing the hoax, according to our findings. Something other than balloons with flares tied to them was seen over Phoenix. A police insider confirms that the FAA and feds are investigating. According to a police councilwoman, new information has uncovered that the witness, Lino Melo, is in the military, specifically the Navy, according to a search done of his old addresses over the years. And military jets were scrambled, according to many local witnesses. Neighbors of Milo's were outside the whole evening and saw no balloons tied to the flares being launched. And indeed, said the man who confessed to launching them, that he wasn't even home that night. Our investigative group feels that all of these facts are overwhelming evidence that something traveled on April 21, 2008 over Phoenix that warrants another media investigation into these events and not just the hoax theory. The quiet farming community of Stephenville, Texas, became the subject of national news broadcasts after UFO sightings were reported there by several dozen witnesses, including a pilot and police officer. Stephenville, located about 75 miles southwest of Fort Worth, is where an object measuring approximately a mile long and a half mile wide was spotted by locals. 
Witnesses say that the craft made no noise and was moving low and fast. A few reports claim that the object had brightly lit lights on it and was being pursued by military jets, but federal officials initially denied that claim. Spokespersons for the nearby Dias and Shepard Air Force bases say that none of their jets were involved and claim that the Air Force no longer investigates UFOs. Major Carl Lewis, a spokesperson for the 301st Fighter Wing at the Joint Reserve Base Naval Air Station in Fort Worth, said that there were no F-16s or other military aircraft from his base involved. Lewis said that what the Stevensville witnesses probably saw was some sort of an optical illusion caused by lights from one or more commercial aircrafts. However, UFO witness Steve Allen disagrees. Strange lights have been seen all around the world in 2007 to 2008. In UK, they've made a real comeback. Noted UK UFO researchers Timothy Good and Nick Pope have called for an investigation into the recent wave of unexplained lights and objects seen over various parts of the UK. There have been over 150 sightings in 2008 alone, which include odd white and green lights seen spotted and photographed in Croydon, South London, at around 2 a.m. on Friday morning, August 29, 2008. According to UFO witness Sid Driscoll, the lights hovered over a 24-hour Tesco store in Croydon. He told the Sun newspaper, It was very weird. It was the most beautiful green and white light moving quite fast, then stopping. It had to be mechanical, like a spaceship, because it slowed down and stopped. It wasn't making any noise. It disappeared in a flash, and I went home and told my girlfriend. She didn't believe me, but the pictures speak for themselves. I don't touch drugs. I'm not a believer in UFOs, but I've got no idea what this was. Nick Pope, who worked for the UK Ministry of Defense, commented on Driscoll's photo. Green lights are unusual. It rules out the so-called Chinese lantern theory that accounted for some recent UFO sightings in the UK. The images and description of the movement doesn't fit a list of things frequently reported as UFOs. Aircraft lights, meteorite satellites. This is a genuine mystery. There have been more than a few other sightings in the Croydon area, and uh, in fact most of the UK during 2008. And not just in the UK. As in the case of the Stevensville and Erath County, Texas sightings, Many of the UK sightings began in January of 2008 and actually before that in December of 2007. For example, Antonella Zari reports in the January 4, 2008 edition of the Sun newspaper from the UK. A man who asked just to be called Edward snapped a strange shaped object which appeared to be buzzing a Navy ship. He said, I was taking photos of the ship when a helicopter from it took off flew west, then landed back on board just a few minutes later. It was only when I blew up the photos on my computer that I realized what the helicopter had gone off to take a look at. It was in the exact same bay as the one featured in the sun earlier this week. American holiday maker Ian Mulford also believes he snapped a UFO at virtually the same spot as Edward. Ian said, I was taking photographs and did not see anything unusual at the time, but after reviewing the photos, I found something very unusual in the background of a picture of one of the family. Partygoer Rodga Harvey claimed he snapped a UFO as he made his way home from a party on New Year's Eve. He says, it, didn't, it was only when I looked at the photo later that I realized there was this weird flying object in the sky. It didn't look like anything normal or normal aircraft, so I'm sure it was a UFO. This stunning photo of a UFO over Cornwall was taken by a man named Kelvin Barbary, who snapped the mystery object from a coastal path between Swanpool and Mainport near Falmouth in the UK. It was a weird twist. Kelvin, 55 years of age, did not even see the UFO at the time, he said. He thought he was just taking a sea view. But when he loaded the digital camera card onto his computer, the round metallic craft 
was in the center of the shot about two miles away. Kelvin, a facilities manager for schools, said, There were a couple of tankers out in the bay and I thought that it made a nice shot. There was nothing in view and certainly no fault on the camera. When I got home, I couldn't believe what I had. I thought, wow, where did that come from? I'm not the sort to believe in UFOs. Now I'm not so sure. It's interesting to note that an almost identical object was photographed in the USA in 1980. On June 7 to 8, 2008, a number of unusual incidents began involving UFOs. In Cardiff, Wales in the UK, stunned police gave chase to a UFO after it attacked their helicopter near a military base. The mystery aircraft zoomed straight at the chopper as the three-man crew prepared to land. The pilot banked sharply to avoid being hit, then launched into a high-speed pursuit. But he was forced to give up the chase after the helicopter's fuel ran low and the UFO escaped. All three men described the object as a flying saucer shape and circled by flashing lights. They reported it to senior officers who passed on the report to Britain's UFO investigators. The incident happened as a helicopter returning was returning to the Ministry of Defense's St. Athan base near Cardiff in Wales where it was stationed. The chopper was at about 500 feet and waiting to land when the crew saw the UFO speeding towards them from below. A source said it closed in at great speed, aiming straight at the helicopter. The chopper had to swerve sharply to avoid being hit. The guys said that if they'd stayed where they were, they'd be dead. It would have been a direct hit. They were convinced it was a UFO. It sounds far-fetched, but they know what they saw. These guys are hardened professionals and no people will take the mickey, but they certainly saw a UFO. The source added, after the near collision, they decided to follow it to find out what the hell it was. They belted across the Bristol Channel in pursuit, but it was too quick. They got to the North Devon coast and had to return back because they were running low on fuel. The chopper is crammed with high-tech cameras and surveillance gear but the UFO somehow avoided being caught on film. Strangely, the crew could not see the craft with night vision goggles, but all said it was clearly visible to the naked eye on the night of June 7th. South Wales police said last night, we can confirm the air support unit sighted an unusual aircraft. This was reported to the relevant authorities for their investigation. The Ministry of Defense, which usually investigates UFO sightings, said, We've heard nothing about this, but it is certainly not advisable for police helicopters to go chasing what they think are UFOs. Hundreds of UFO sightings over Wales were reported after this event, after the mystery craft threatened a police helicopter. The Sun newspaper, for example, was bombarded with calls from readers who also said that the UFO on the same night as a chopper drama in Cardiff. And the mystery deepened as experts revealed airline pilots have spotted, have spotted hundreds of UFOs over the nearby Bristol Channel between 2007 and 2008. The Sun revealed that the helicopter streamman crew took evasive action to avoid being rammed by the UFO, then chased it to North Devon before giving it up as fuel ran low. Dawn Williams, 45, feared an Independence Day style alien invasion when she spotted a sinister shape in the sky near Abadair County Country Park hours later on June 8th. She said it came over the horizon and was traveling for about a minute and a half before it vanished. It was circular and had a dome on top. It looked like a planet with rings. I didn't say anything at the time because I didn't think anyone would believe me. Cabaret duo Katie Cunian and Russell Quinn said that a weird light in the sky followed them on the A5 near Shrewsbury an hour after the copper scare. Katie, 25 years old, said it was hovering. At first I thought it was a helicopter, but every time I changed direction, it was in the same place. It disappeared, then I got a bit, bit freaked out when the light came back and close enough for us to see it was saucer-shaped with lights which, which flashed from one end 
to the other in a chain. It looked like no planar aircraft I've ever seen, she said. It finally zoomed off like a shooting star after an hour. Katie's description of the UFO matches one given by the helicopter pilots and uh, policemen. Expert David Coggins, who studied UFOs for almost 30 years, revealed, I'm told that in the past three months, airline pilots have been reporting at least two to three encounters a week with UFOs over the Bristol Channel. Many of them have rational explanations, but the probability is that at least 15 to 20 percent cannot be identified. Later in June of 2008, these other sightings occurred. A dog walker saw a UFO. A Tamworth woman claimed to have witnessed a UFO as she walked her dog in Broomsgrove. Bonnie Lewis, age 29, was with her boyfriend, Colin Middlemore, when she saw the strange cylinder shapes overhead at around 10 p.m. on Friday, June 20, 2008. She said, I ignored them, thinking they were satellites. But when it was closer, it was clear they were not. I'm not into sci-fi, but they were not from planet Earth. And then there was the infamous soldier sighting. A soldier claims he saw 13 UFOs in the sky above his military barracks in Shropshire on 6-7-2008, roughly around the same time as the helicopter incident. Corporal Mark Porter was among three soldiers who spotted the objects while out on night patrol. He filmed them on his mobile phone and reported the close encounter to the Army's top brass. The Ministry of Defense experts are reportedly studying his report after ordering Mark and his pals not to say anything else about the incident. The sighting at Turnhill Barracks near Market Drayton came two hours before the helicopter pilots reported an encounter with a huge craft 80 miles away near Cardiff. Colonel Proctor, 38, of the 1st Battalion Irish Regiment recalled how he saw the UFOs just after 11 p.m. on Saturday, June 7th. He said, I was on duty in the guard room when the other boys outside began shouting. I went out to see what was the commotion, and it was, there were at least 13 craft in the skies. They were zigzagging, but I filmed two before they vanished. They were rotating like cubes with multiple colors. I made a full report to my commanding officers and gave them my footage. The other lads were as amazed as I was. The Ministry of Defense spokesman said, we deal with any UFO sightings to see if there was a military threat. By the end of June, the UFO encounters were being blamed on Chinese Latins. But what's the truth? A clerk at the Turnhill Hall Hotel told UK newspapers that the launch of Chinese lanterns for a wedding reception was behind the mass sighting of UFOs by soldiers and civilians on June 7, 2008. However, some experts disagree. Even if the lanterns were released as claimed, they would have been too small to account for the objects that were witnessed, photographed, and filmed. Mark Hanley, a British UFO researcher, says that he has investigated many cases involving the release of Chinese lanterns. These objects are easily identified, Hanley says. The size, colors, and shape of the objects from the Turnhill Hotel do not match what people describe or photograph. Lanterns burn up after a short time and do not behave in the manner described by witnesses of the UFOs observed on June 7th. The hotel told me that they announced the release of lanterns in advance to avoid complaints from residents and local business people that they're a distraction and may cause fires. Hanley claims that the hotel has been cited by local fire authorities on previous occasions because of the release of the lanterns without previous um, notification. Hanley's statements were at odds with those of Stuart Willett, the manager of the Turnhill Hall Hotel. Willett says, we've had inquiries from residents before, but it's the first time it's been classed as a UFO. He claims that the hotel has not previously announced the release of Chinese lanterns, but Anna Musgrave disagrees. She's a local resident and owner of a business that's near the hotel. According to several UK newspapers, Anna said, I had one of these lanterns land on my property prior to this incident and the blank thing caused damage. The hotel staff told us they would be launching those things, 
but there was still damage and I complained to the authorities. Whether or not the hotel was responsible for the June 7, 2008 sightings is a question that literally remains up in the air. However, that's not the only sighting that people are trying to debunk. The sighting of what the Shropshire Star newspaper called a huge, unidentified object rising from the ground towards a police helicopter in Cardiff at 12.40 a.m. on Sunday, June 8th, is now also being blamed on the Chinese lanterns, despite the fact that they would have all burned up long before that encounter. David Clark, a self-described UFO expert that helped the British government prepare the Ministry of Defense files for public release, told the BBC, Call me cynical, but what are the chances that a flying saucer would come down from either outer space in exactly the same place where lanterns have been released? He fails to notice the time discrepancy, or perhaps doesn't care. Since most UFO researchers believe that many of the MOD files were whitewashed before being released, his opinion should not be seriously considered. The helicopter crew involved in the UFO incident made it clear that the object they saw with their eyes could not be seen with night vision goggles. Marshall Clayton, an employee of Night Owl Tactical, maker of night vision goggles, said that they would not that would not be the case if what came at the helicopter was a Chinese lantern. He says, quote, any object that is self-illuminating would easily be seen with the goggles, especially if it has an active flame. A candle or battery powered light would stand out, unquote. It's important to understand that other objects were seen and photographed on the dates of June 7 to 8, 2008. Sean Williams was taking some daytime photographs with a digital camera near his house. When he got home and reviewed the photos, a classic disc-shaped UFO appeared on one of them, along with an aircraft he was trying to photograph against a clear blue sky. Sean said, I couldn't believe when I looked back at my photos and this strange object was there. The object did not resemble a Chinese lantern in any way, shape, or form. Simon Griffey, 50 years old, and his son Jack, 23 years old, say they were driving near, and pardon these pronunciations, Lianjinaider Mountain in the Brecon Beacons, Poways, when they spotted unusual lights over Talibant on Usk in Wales. The incident took place on June 12, 2008, at around 11.40 p.m. at night, and Jack took a cell phone photograph of the lights. It would have been impossible for the lanterns released on June 7, 2008, to account for these lights because they would have all burned out and crashed to the earth by that time. Dr. Griffey, a psychologist, Griffey, a psychologist at Cardiff University, told UK newspapers, there were seven lights and having read the description from the soldiers in Shropshire, there are some similarities. They were the same sort of color and the same spherical shape that they reported. I know I wasn't seeing things because Jack saw exactly the same thing that I did and two other cars pulled over to look. There was no noise whatsoever. It was a bit eerie. I've driven over this mountain for 17 years and have never seen anything like it. When confronted with the Chinese lanterns theory, Dr. Griffey stated, the police helicopter crew said they failed to record the sighting on their equipment. The psychologist noted the same thing that I pointed out when the lanterns theory was put forth a few days ago, that they should have shown up on the police helicopter's camera equipment, or at least the pilot's night vision goggles. Or his own son's photo only captured three of seven objects that he was trying to photograph. Dr. Griffey went on to say, if it had been a natural phenomenon, you surely would have been able to photograph all of it. I'd like someone to explain, because I have no idea what to make of it. The location of the June 12th sighting lies directly between the locations of the June 7th to 8th Turnhills Barracks and the St. Athan police helicopter incidents. If someone were to explain the sighting using the Chinese lanterns released on June 7th, they'd have to explain how these lanterns managed to stay lighted and airborne for days after they were released. And there's still the problem of the daylight sighting of a classic disc-shaped object on June 7th by Sean Williams, 
Williams, a 12-year-old, photographed a classic flying saucer while taking pictures of an airplane. It's now known that his photo was taken around 3 p.m. in the afternoon, which was actually earlier than the alleged release of the Chinese lanterns by the local hotel manager. On top of all the activity in Wales, a new set of UFO sightings were reported over Basingstoke, England on Saturday, June 28, 2008, and include photos of up to 12 objects. David Osborne, 47 years old, made this statement to a UK newspaper. He said, My adrenaline was pumping, and I was trembling all over. I've never seen anything like it. It was amazing. The father of two, an amateur astronomer, asked his daughters to bring his camera outside to where he was watching the objects. They did. He managed to take several photographs before going back in his house to report the UFOs. Osborne called nearby RAF, Ottaham. Osborne's daughters, Natalie, 20, and Charlotte, 18, remained outside and watched the objects. Charlotte said, There were about 12 of these orange-colored spherical objects. I thought, oh my God, what the hell is that? They were changing formation in the sky for about half an hour. Natalie, a university student, was equally impressed and said, Chinook helicopters regularly fly over, but these were silent. It's scary. The Osbournes were not the only Basingstoke UFO witnesses. Reg Lockyer, 47, claimed he saw up to 20 of them and told a local newspaper, I thought it was absolutely a fleet of UFOs. In behavior that is identical to what happened in places like New Jersey, Indiana, Illinois, and Texas over the past year in the USA, witnesses say that the lights over Basingstoke drifted across the sky, switching from a delta formation to a random pattern, then an arced line and a triangle before disappearing. David Osborne said, They weren't moving fast enough for a satellite and were not hovering, not being blown about by the wing. They were actually hovering, rather, excuse me, and were not being blown about by the wind. Basingstoke is located in Hampshire, southeast England. It's about 48 miles southwest of London. With a population of over 80,000 people, it's nowhere near the Welsh towns where the June 7th and 8th UFO sightings occurred. But like many areas in England, this town has been the site of multiple UFO sightings over the years, and, along with the observation of strange objects in the sky, has been a place where strange creatures have been spotted on the ground.